Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here, and we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you'll be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, at Optimistic.tv, we have officially begun releasing the first few episodes of our new late-night-style, consciousness-elevating video variety talk show, Optimistic, which features live visionary art, soul-share interviews, retreat guests here at the Mystic Manor, as well as live musical performances. I'm also super excited to announce that we are currently making plans to release the rest of season one on my personal favorite online streaming service. So stay tuned to optimistic.tv to follow the unfolding development of this exciting optimistic expansion as we'll be posting more info and release dates there soon. And in the meantime, be sure to check out, of course, the first few episodes at optimistic.tv as well. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a magical Monday here in the studio as I record, and I am so grateful to be back with you guys as always. I am going to share some reflection corrections from the universe today. I've had a pretty cool little synchronistic stint here lately. Uh, during the quarantine, especially in the last month or so, you know, I feel like on the show for a long time, I wasn't, I, I wasn't having as many synchronicity stories as I did at one time. And, you know, I haven't maybe been sharing them as much as I did early on in the show, because, um, I think, you know, years back, I, now I've gotten just even more used to them, but you know, even still in the last few years or last year or so, not as many as like the last month or so has been absolutely through the roof the amount of reflections that in synchronicity that is happening it's just like non-stop so i'm going to share a fun one with you that was a, a learning as well for me and this came let's see on friday i had uh, i received a note from the universe um which you can get over at tut.com you guys have heard me talk about notes from the universe before this guy mike Dooley writes them and sends them out as a as a rep in the universe and uh they're always fun and timely and synchronistic and uh just interesting and uh yeah so i got one on, on friday and it stuck out to me and uh, then be you know following up behind that was some um sort of lessons tied into it so first i'll, I'll read the note from the universe brandon your attention please your attention please this is the universe Today, I'll be recording your every thought and emotion, no matter how good or bad, no matter how generous or stingy, and no matter how helpful or hurtful they may be. And everything I record will be played back for you as soon as possible as some type of physical manifestation in time and space. Thank you. That is all the universe. And then the PS is, boy, Brandon, you suddenly got so authoritative. Oh, that was me. Never mind. <laughs> so, okay. I thought this one was really good in general prior to the, the story I'm about to share with you guys. Just the idea of, wow, first it stuck out to me, no matter how generous or stingy, right? It's going to be played back for me. So that was the first thing. When I first read it, it really stuck out. You know, I saw it first thing in the morning and I thought, oh man, where am I being stingy and holding back at times? You know, um, oh, I'm running low on Purium Shake Mix in, in here at the Mystic Manor and there's so many people who will eat it and I want to have one tomorrow too. So I'm taking it and putting it in my room or whatever, right? Like I'm starting to analyze these things a little bit. I noticed that morning afterwards, like, oh, what can I do? And, and, and you know, and, and in some cases it doesn't mean you're always stingy if you're like preserving something that you need or whatever. It's, it's, it's a fine balance, right? Of really checking in with yourself. It's like, am I coming from a lack of abundance or an abundance mentality, you know? And, and, 
It's so easy, even for someone like me who's constantly professing all this stuff. When I start checking myself even more closely, am I being stingy? Am I holding back in some way? It's like, um, you know, I can see so clearly in retrospect of my life how often, you know, I always use my last company as, as a, an example. You know, this for those of you, many of you have heard me talk about it and some of you may be new to the show, but, uh, you know, I had an uh, Inc. 500 fastest growing private company in the U.S. that I took from my friend's couch, just me with an idea to 100 plus employees and, you know, this big deal. And, and then it, I lost it all in this crazy way. And there was a betrayal involved with the partner and all of this stuff. And I can look back in retrospect and see how I created all of it by focusing energy on I'm going to manifest something great. Someone might try and take something from me. All of it was a reflection in some way, shape or form of energy that I had given. And so, you know, when you're looking at these subtle energies every day, that's a big one, right? What about the little ones? How little stingy things that you do that are limiting and not uh, a reflection of someone that's super abundant. I used the the shake mix as an example. I ended up where I would have probably taken it in that moment. Normally I'm like, no, I'm going to leave it here because there's more coming and, you know, just like, you know, go above and beyond to be uh, gregarious and giving and And um, like I said, not to say there's never a time and place when you shouldn't hold back from that, but what energy are you coming from? You know, are you coming from scarcity? Are you coming from, you know, survival? Are you coming from thrival? Are you coming from scarcity? Are you coming from abundance mentality and, and vibration? And so always looking at the energy signature that you're leaving off with your thoughts and decisions and the little nuanced things you're doing throughout your day. So I started, you know, really paying attention and I encourage all of you to really tap into the little decisions that you're making throughout the the rest of this day when you're hearing this or tomorrow or whatever and and then and then analyzing those decisions so i just did this micro decision is that based in a in a uh, abundant energy is that based in a in a lack is it based in uh, unity consciousness is it based in separation am i you know um you know, where, where, where am I coming from with this? Am, am I being as loving as I could possibly be? Am I viewing this as the best possible thing to do for everyone that it affects? Because it's all me. Everywhere I go, I'm there waiting. I'm, I'm there, um, you know, waiting for myself. I'm there looking back at me, right? And so if I'm really viewing things from that perspective, that you're the only one in the room and what's good for some someone else is good for me because they are me. Once again, this doesn't mean to take it, get taken advantage of or something that feels like bad to you or, or maybe bad's not a good word. It doesn't feel like a, um, it's, it's not respecting your own self and your own boundaries. That's a whole different thing, right? But are you always going above and beyond to be as um, loving as possible? What are you doing when no one's looking, right? What are you doing when no one's looking? You know, making that choice that no one will never know that you chose to do this very high road move, right? And that's really, these are the nuanced things where we can really fine tune our vibration. And as a result, then start to see vibrational reflections. Every time I've been been the bigger person and given more than I had to or whatever. Oh, what do you know? All of a sudden this other great thing came around that was abundant and a reflection of that energy. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our new sponsor, Noom. I agreed to do this promo spot because I am super impressed with the futuristic and simple process that Noom has implemented to revolutionize diet and wellness. Noom is the unique habit-changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food. And it's not a diet. No food is good or bad. As we talk about on the show all the time, it's all about proper balance and having good habits. And Noom just teaches you how to look inside your own mind and make better decisions for yourself. Sounds familiar, right? It's based in psychology, so I'm personally really excited about starting to use it to understand my own thought patterns better. And they make it super easy to do with a minimal commitment of only 10 minutes a day, which is essential for someone like me with so much on my plate. No pun intended. So if you'd like to take the journey with me and sign up for a trial, head over to noom.com forward slash positive head to start your trial today. That's spelled N-O-O-M dot com forward slash positive head. I mean, what do you have to lose except outdated habits and perhaps a few extra pounds by signing up for the trial? Once again, N-O-O-M dot com forward slash positive head.
that's the first part of this I want to talk about. Now, here's where it gets interesting, where it started to play back for me, a judgment that I had about someone. So uh, I'm a former girlfriend, former partner from years ago, was actually on some of the very early episodes. Um, you know, her and I were together for many years. We had a very harmonious relationship. She co-hosted a few of the early episodes um, and, you know, had me. I have nothing but good things to say about that relationship. We split up several, maybe two and a half, three years ago now, something like that. And, you know, from time to time, we've, t- we've talked a little bit. We haven't seen each other too much. And there's still a little weirdness there and hurt there, I think. And, um, and so, you know, I, every now and then I'll check out her Instagram or, you know, just check in and, or, or text her or something. And, and so I, I remember a couple of years ago, I looked at her Instagram and it said, uh, at the top of it, you know, the little the little part you can fill out about yourself is like, wake up, kick ass, repeat. And I remember at the time, right, I thought, hold on. You know, we'd been broken up a year or so at this time. I'm like, what? Who is this person? Wait, wake up, kick ass, repeat. Like, that doesn't sound anything like the person that I dated. You know, the person that I dated was very, we went to a lot of transformational festivals and she was having a lot of doing Reiki training and doing all this energy work. And now her profile, even her, her social media reflected someone much, um, if I was going to be judgy, much more basic, right? Not, not in the same like, Ooh, spiritual community or not putting off any of that energy and much more like, you know, pictures, drinking wine with a friend or, you know, very more standard, right? But in a judgy mindset, I could be like, Oh, that's basic. That's not, there's not, I feel like how unoriginal, what, how not unique, right? And so, so, you know, go, my first judgment was this wake up, kick ass, repeat. I'm like, that doesn't even sound like you like kick ass. That doesn't resonate here. You're, you're like the Zen kind of energy, like what? Okay, whatever, you know? And, uh, so then I, I, you know, that, that's been there for a long time. And then I look, um, <laughs> I look recently right after getting this the same day, I think I looked at this notes from the universe. So the ne- next day, um, I look at her profile and it was, you know, a recent picture. And she's like, oh, <laughs> Rose season didn't hit as hard this year or something like to that effect, like talking about rosé season. And then, you know, I think the quarantine and maybe all the things that are happening with um, the protest and I, you know, I didn't read it all, but instantly I had another judgment, like rosé season, like, like, oh gosh, this is like some yuppie, like, you know, oh gosh, you think she's like really fancy and, uh, you know, it's like way different than the person I dated. And it's like how basic and, you know, uh, just, you know, instantly those thoughts came up, those energies came up in me. And so, you know, whatever I left and I just was like, kind of slipped into that old pattern of judging someone that really is probably tied to other, like, you know, whatever history and still little bit of hurt that's there or whatever. Right. And so it's so easy. We all can relate to that projecting onto someone that we really care about and, and then feeling like put off by them or, you know, especially put off and, so anyway, I, I didn't think much of it. It was just like a very, these were not big things. It's not like I'm sitting there dwelling on it for an hour or anything. It's like a, oh my gosh, roll my eyes kind of thing. Rose season gag. I'm out of here, you know, right? And so then I'm going on a hike uh, <laughs> with, uh, on, on Saturday, I'm going on a hike. So that note came on Friday. Yeah. And then um, Saturday morning, I'm going on a hike with um, with Bradley, my son and Karen, my partner and Bradley's girlfriend, Georgia, and we're all going on a hike and we're just in the car and I, I start talking, you know, about my ex a little bit and like, oh gosh, Rosie, you know what? I went on her page and she had rosé season and oh gosh, how, you know, kind of being that judgy person, right? Um, not fully aware that I'm even doing that. And we, we talk about it and, you know, I'm sure they all had something really, I don't even remember how exactly they responded. I'm sure they're all so like kind and open-minded. They probably like were the bigger people for sure. And how they responded. I'm sure Bradley is always that way. Karen's always that way. Like whatever. It wasn't a big conversation, but we talked about it. I literally, right after I finish talking about it, um, I get back to the mystic manor and um, a new, a new uh, uh, yeah, friend that's staying here uh, for the for the month. We're subleasing out some of the spots. Um, we, you know, we were doing retreats all the time, and we're going to be starting that back here at some point when we know for sure uh, that we can. But anyway, we, we so this guy. Um, 
Chris is you know newly here and he walks in with his uh, a friend of his he hadn't seen in a long time and he's like oh Brandon this is my friend you know if you're around this here in a bit we, we just got this bottle of rosé we're going to be drinking tonight and I'd love to offer you some and I'm like oh oh rosé huh okay so I instantly catch it right I instantly see it and I'm like uh oh, here it is okay all right universe I, I I'm seeing this feedback. Um, and so then I start thinking about it. Oh, yeah, man. Okay. So here's this really cool new roommate, right? Who's just awesome and doing this friendly gesture and I'm judging someone else. And he's, by the way, he, his nickname is Panther. So <laughs> he's not at all basic. Like he, he would be more like what I would say is not, you know, basic and kind of weird and eccentric and all those things. Right. So here's someone who embodied all the things I said she had walked away from in my quick micro judgment of her. And yet he had the bottle of rosé and was offering it up to me then. Um, okay. And I had that wrong. We were actually on our way to the hike. We had gotten food first. Then that happened. Then we were on our way to the hike. We're on our way to the hike. We get in, in line to pay for parking. And there's a really nice girl who's in front of me who um, starts, uh, you know, who starts asking us questions and talking to us. And what is she holding in her arms? A bottle of rosé that Karen points out. Did you notice what she's just holding? Because, of course, I told them about being offered rosé, uh, you know, on the way to the hike. And so she was holding a bottle. And I'm like, OK. Then the guy behind me is like commenting on my uh, balance bags. Uh, as they're called, my friend Pat makes them. Uh, his company is awesome, called Covalence. If you guys want to check them out, just to throw it out there since I'm talking about it anyway. I had another synchronicity in the same line where this guy's like, oh, those are awesome bags that you're wearing. And, and you can go to co covalence.cc and it's like you wear them. It's kind of like a merce, you know, except they, they hang over your shoulders and, um, you know, they're on under each armpit or like these two little bags and they look really cool and almost like holsters, right? And I carry all my stuff in them and kind of like festival wear and really good for like adventures or hiking or whatever. And so this guy's like, oh, where'd you get those? And I'm like, oh, my friend has this little bitty bitty company called Covalence. He, you know, they're not big. He makes them himself. And I can, he's like, and I showed him the logo and he's like, what? what? I just found a sticker of that yesterday afternoon. I thought how cool the logo was. And it, it was that same company. And I'm like, what? They're not even big at all, you know? And so it was just like synchronicity after synchronicity after synchronicity. And so anyway, so then get this. We're on our way back from the hike and we're walking, we're driving almost home. And there's an area where there's a big row of people that are experiencing homelessness. Right. And one of them had a giant like billboard kind of sign, like almost like you'd see in front of a store. Right. That he had somehow taken in front of his tent and it was sitting there and on the sign in big letters, I kid you not, was wake up, kick ass, repeat. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Here's that message coming back. Okay. All right, universe. I get it. I'm an asshole. <laughs> I need to kick my own ass because here I've been, you know, it, it's just like this wonderful reflection showing me this, this pattern that I slipped into that is so easy and it's so deeply rooted and so nuanced. Just like we were talking about at the beginning, what, you know, where are you being one of those micro choices, those micro decisions, starting to catch them. You know, these, these people, your friends and family and loved ones can trigger you the most into micro judgments. And, you know, really we're, we're getting into the weeds here of the nuanced energy that you're offering in vibration. And man, is it helpful when the universe starts like taking that and reflecting it back to you with a giant sign, but it doesn't always do that. Right. And thankfully for me, it did in this case. I mean, it literally just kept hitting me over the head with Rose and then the sign and then, you know, and, uh, and it caused me to really self analyze what I was doing. And then, you know, what I landed on is there's nothing basic about it. It's exactly what she needs for where she's at in her journey. It's exactly perfect. And she may choose something different tomorrow, next week, next month, maybe not right? Everyone is right where they're supposed to be. They're choosing right where they're meant to, to, to go next. And a lot of times that is choosing something that then they determine is like, oh, that's not really me or it's not really, fit. I'm going to try. Think about when you're in high school or whatever, like I'm going to be golf this year. Oh, I'm going to be into punk rock. Oh, now I'm a skateboarder. Oh, now I'm, you know, whatever. I'm really into hip hop. Oh, now, you know, you think of that because we've all seen either done it or seen it, right? Uh, all the phases that you can go through. And that's oh, perfectly okay for it doesn't ever have to stop. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as some of the haircuts you got at 
15 years old, but <laughs> you don't have to get a pink mohawk, but you can, and that'd be okay. And so, you know, letting people have their process and you're not better than them or cooler than them because of theirs is more mainstream, whatever they're doing. Right. And that's something that I think, um, I know for me, I've had to be really careful of falling into the I, I'm cooler than you thing, you know, and that's just BS. Like what's cool is kindness. That is the ultimate currency and understanding and allowing people their process and tr knowing and trusting that their process is different than your process. What's cool is making micro judgments when no one's looking that are abundant and loving and considering of everyone and everything that you're affecting and, and, uh, and, and involved with. Right? What effect are you make, making when no one's looking? That's cool. So, yeah, let's keep it cool. No judgments. <laughs> Everyone have a cl nice glass of rosé for me tonight and uh, today, whenever, wherever you are. And uh, I hope you are uh, waking up tomorrow, kick-assing and repeating. <laughs> uh, with that being said, I'm out. I'm out of here. I'm off to kick ass somewhere else. Until next time, journey well. Love you all so, so much. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor.